for today's talk is, is around the Folio Innovation Challenge, which is a, um, a exciting program sponsored by EBSCO. Um, so there's been quite a bit of interest in the greater library community around open source projects, around open source platforms, and, and Folio in general. And to, to, to see some of that excitement happen uh, and be directed towards the Folio community, we felt um, that it would be really exciting to fund some projects to help libraries tackle some of the, the biggest challenges uh, that, that they're trying to solve. Um, and if those projects and problems uh, can be solved on the Folio platform, uh, we felt that it would be beneficial for the greater community if we were all working together from that common platform, Folio. Um, and, and EBSCO wanted to be a part of growing that initiative and, and why we are sponsoring the Innovation Challenge. So let's talk about the, let's talk about the Innovation Challenge. Um, it's, it's an exciting program. It is $100,000. Um, we've decided to provide this, uh, this size or this amount of funding to really make an impact on library technologies, to make all of these great projects, programs that are out there today uh, more easily accessible to libraries um, and bring the community closer together. And we felt that by helping to spearhead some of that development, we could make that bigger impact. Um, and that's what the Innovation Challenge is really all about. Um, so it's, it's a program where we can help to bring together those um, independent projects that are coming together and how we can help bring the community together on the Folio platform. So let, let's talk a, a bit about that. Um, so we are going to be offering up a total of $100,000 to help advance really the adoption of the Folio platform. So there will be a number of different individual grants that will be selected out of the proposals. Um, uh, out of those proposals, we will select um, based off of the, these criteria. We want to help um, bring those projects together, as I mentioned, all from the, the common platform that is Folio by, by looking at um, current challenges um, that academic libraries are facing, whether it's um, addressing specific needs around repositories, around um, uh, how to be uh, more effective in the physical space by bringing technology into the physical space. Maybe it's something as simple as room booking technology or looking at usage of rooms or things like um, maker spaces and how they're being used and um, how they are being leveraged and how they can be better uh, managed um, all through the Folio platform. So it, it's these types of ideas that the EBSCO program would really like to help to fund and, and see how we can bring these projects together. Um, so we have a number of uh, individuals who have reached out to us who are interested in um, in submitting a proposal for the grant, and I encourage, I encourage you all to really think about what are those, what are those challenges that you're facing that you would really like to see incorporated into a platform like Folio. How how, how can we bring together um, these these projects, these programs, all onto a single platform, and how can we make them easily accessible for other libraries to leverage? Um, and, and another thing that I really want to stress, um, because we've heard this already from a number of individuals who are interested um, in, in uh, submitting a proposal, is what happens if your institution does not have the development resources? This is really a developer challenge, right? It's kind of how we phrase it as, as being a developer's challenge to, um, to help fund solving some of those problems um, and to help fund the development of that. But I, I want to make it clear that if you don't have the ability 
to pull together those development resources, we still encourage you to submit the proposal. If you have a really great idea um, uh, about how to, how to solve a problem and how that might work with the Folio platform, uh, go ahead and submit a proposal because we want to work with the greater community to try and find um, developers who would like to work on solving those problems. And maybe we can pair you up um, with some of those developers who are looking to help out, looking to solve some of those problems. Um, so, so if your institution does not have development resources, but you still are thinking about um, some of these problems, some of these challenges, we still encourage you to, to submit a proposal. Um, and, and also I would encourage you to, to perhaps look at other institutions that you might want to pair up with. Um, by bringing together a number of different institutions, maybe some institutions that you know that do have development resources, it, that might make your proposal more exciting and get you better chances uh, of winning those, um, those grants. So um, the, the grants will be between $5,000 and $20,000, depending on the size and the complexity of the project. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're, um, if you have these kind of a smaller project idea, or maybe you're one of these institutions that doesn't have developers, um, maybe we can fund you on the smaller side and also provide some funding to um, another organization or another team um, from another institution to, to pair up with you. So we might look at combining projects as well from that perspective. Um, again, kind of going along with the idea of Folio being an open source project, all of the deliverables, um, everything that will be produced from the funding of these grants will also be open source. So um, we are encouraging you to be able to build and develop these modules as open source uh, uh, projects as, as a result of this. So, so we're really f helping to fund grow uh, the, the overall Folio community and, and projects uh, that will be available for the Folio platform. So all of these projects must be available for Folio, must be open source so that they're accessible for, for the community. Um, everything will then get uh, hosted on on the GitHub platform where, where the Folio code base is as well. Uh, so they will be contributed to the community. They will be a part of the Folio platform. Um, and we have three different rounds. So we're not going to be uh, delivering all of the grants all at one time. There are three deadlines. Um, and we really wanted to, to do this to give um, different organizations time in preparation, right? Um, because a lot of the core foundation of Folio is still active development and, and I think a lot of the work that's happening within the community today is going to be some of those keystones that many of these other projects are going to be built on top of. So, so we wanted to make sure that um, the organizations, the institutions, the individuals who are really looking to to solve some of these problems um, can do so maybe next year or look at focusing that, that effort next year when some of those keystone modules or keystone apps on the Folio platform are, are there uh, to build on top of. So the, the first deadline uh, coming up very soon, um, so you're greatly encouraged. If um, you, I, I think you would probably have better chances if you get in on earlier rounds. Um, we're going to be getting more and more picky as the rounds uh, come. So um, if you, you know, you're going to have a better chance of winning um, if you get in early. So the first round uh, coming up in just a few weeks, May 31st, um, and we will be announcing the winners at ALA Annual. Uh, for that first round. The, the second round will be um, in December, at the end of December. So we're kind of giving you the rest of the year to work on proposals for round two. And again, we'll be announcing those winners uh, at ALA as well, ALA Midwinter. Um, the third round will be shortly thereafter, just a few months later um, in early 2018. And we will be announcing that at a conference to be determined. 
um, we're looking at being able to announce some of those in Europe um, as this truly is a global project. Now, due to some legal restrictions, um, not any country in the world is eligible uh, for this, uh, but if you do go to the rules page on the innovation challenge URL, uh, which is ebsco.com slash forward slash folio dash innovation dash challenge. If you go to that URL, um, you'll be able to download the rules and there will be a list of countries uh, for those in, uh, that are eligible. Um, so round three, we're hoping to do the announcement um, at an international conference. Um, again, we're, we're um, making sure that we are making individuals and institutions from outside of North America aware of this as well, because there are several countries that are eligible. So we want to also encourage those of you who are outside of the uh, North American region, um, scattered throughout Europe and Asia, uh, to also apply. Um, your problems are the problems that we have here, the problems that we're trying to tackle with, with these ideas uh, for, the, for the innovation challenge are probably uh, challenges and problems that we're all trying to solve for libraries all around the world. So uh, Folio truly is a global project and we want to make sure that everybody can be included on this. Um, so just to kind of give you some ideas as to uh, what, you know, maybe, maybe some suggestions as to what would be good applications or good proposals for the Folio Challenge. I just kind of want to walk through a little bit around the functionality for, for Folio um, and what, you know, what sort of things are, are people thinking about. Um, so we've talked about this in the past. Um, these are the, the core apps. These are the things that the community has been actively engaged with now and working through and making available on the Folio platform. Right, so we have within Okapi, we have the system and tenant management, but uh, there's also a, a number of different special interest groups actively working on things like resource management, acquisitions, cataloging, circulation, data migration tools. Those are all the tools and, and apps, if you will, that are uh, slated to be made available with the Folio platform. These are what the community has been referring to as the core apps. Um, and all of these apps to be made as, as open source modules. Um, other vendors, such as EBSCO, would be looking to provide other services that libraries are subscribing to today as a part of the Folio platform. Things like uh, discovery, link resolution, holdings management, those sorts of apps can continue to be subscribed to from commercial vendors, such as EBSCO, um, but integrated in with the Folio platform. So while things like um, Viewfind and Blacklight would potentially be made available on the Folio platform as, as uh, discovery options, you can still leverage commercial vended solutions like EDS, where you can get all of your article content integrated in um, with uh, the Folio platform and leveraging the content and data that's being stored in, in the Folio platform in with your discovery solution. So these are the, these are kind of the, the solutions that, that the vendors are, are looking to make available as integrations with, with the Folio platform. But really what we want to talk about are going beyond the traditional ILS. You know, what is it that, that libraries have been trying to solve for, for a long time? What are the problems that we're talking about with, with the innovation uh, project, the uh, innovation challenge? This is, this is where the community can, can um, better leverage from, from funding like the innovation challenge um, and other initiatives that are underway to create some of these integrations. Um, integrations with open source institutional repository platforms. Um, data mining services, how do we get more out of all of the data that's being stored in this platform, right? Um, and how do we leverage linked open data? So we, we've been talking a lot about in the community, the data storage within Folio and being able to leverage things like um, uh, Postgres to store both um, relational data, but also kind of flat unstructured data. Um, 
but also thinking about how we might also be able to leverage other types of data storage mechanisms, things like Fedora or Solar or other uh, data platforms that are commonly used with library data to do or make service, other types of services available with, with that data. Um, wouldn't it be exciting that as we are storing data into the Folio platform, um, it's also searchable from a solar index, or it's also described as a digital object in Fedora and made available as linked data. So these are some of the projects that we've been hearing about throughout the community that would make for really exciting innovation challenge proposals. Um, these are kind of the ideas that, that EBSCO is looking to help spearhead through this initiative. How can we, how can we make some of these more attractive um, for institutions to start to tackle these problems on the Folio platform so that not only are they solved for their own institution, but they're solved for all of the institutions around the world who are looking to leverage the Folio platform. Um, and uh, also, I just wanted to bring into the conversation uh, as well some of the ideas of, of how can other institutions uh, leverage these platforms and these integrations. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we've been hearing from institutions that would like to submit uh, a proposal for the Innovation Challenge but don't have development resources. And, and we're encouraging those to happen just as much as we're encouraging libraries with developers on staff uh, to submit proposals as well. Um, but also some, some institutions want to, how can, how can we leverage Folio if we don't have those development resources in-house, if we, if we don't have the ability to spin up our own environment, our own infrastructure, and, and how do we work with, with Folio ourselves? Um, and so not only EBSCO, but other companies has also stepped up and said, hey, we really want to ensure that Folio is a great success with your library. Um, and this is a great way for EBSCO to help support um, your library, as well as other vendors, to host and provide these services. So one of the things that EBSCO is also looking at, at doing is to provide a, a services solution with Folio um, by providing things like training and hosting, um, implementation, and um, uh, your early on data migrations, your initial setups, but also on an ongoing support service. Um, I've been talking with libraries that have been, that have implemented open source ILS systems such as Koha and Evergreen. And what they said was in the, in the early days of going live with a platform like that, um, there was, um, I'll say, not necessarily a, a large cost savings, maybe a, a minimal cost savings, because in the initial year or two, there was that initial setup cost. There was some customizations that needed to be made. There was some one-off modifications or work with a support agency, maybe a company like Bywater Solutions or, or a company like Liblon, um, where they've worked with these organizations, um, Equinox as well with Evergreen, to, to, set, to set up these, these platforms. But then maybe in year two or year three or year four is when they really started to recognize tremendous cost savings. And so EBSCO and other vendors as well um, are looking to provide that type of service. So any library can, can really work with and leverage the Folio platform um, and take advantage of the community, of these uh, solutions that are being developed in the community by other vendors, by other third parties, by being able to take advantage of all of that and make a very uh, affordable solution so that any library can leverage Folio um, by, by having one of these um, support services in place, have, have Folio hosted, have that ongoing support contract in place um, to ensure that Folio uh, will work for, for that library going forward. Um, another question that we've had quite a bit when I've been out there talking with libraries about, about the community, about about these third-party applications and, and these other projects that are ongoing is how, how might a library get support for that uh, going forward? Uh, there's, there's a bit of anxiety, if you will, um, when thinking about these, these apps that are created. So um, 
you know, let's say uh, it's March of 2018 and all of the Folio Innovation Challenge grants have been awarded and those organizations, those institutions are underway in developing those solutions and they start to become available for the Folio community, what's the plan going forward? And so that's where um, these support services can really help ensure that um, these apps will continue to work for, for libraries. So EBSCO is looking at um, how do we validate or how do we vet the apps that are coming from the community to ensure that they will work for a long time and, and get support from them. Libraries have said, well, I, I don't want to have five different organizations that I have to go to for support for not only Folio, but all of the apps that I'm using on, on the Folio platform. Um, and we understand that. And that's where a, a company, a, a vended solution, somebody like an EBSCO can, can provide a, a support service for, those, for the, all of those apps so that you have one organization to work with. So EBSCO will be looking at providing a, um, a, a vetting process uh, to ensure that we can support those apps as well. So there will be apps that, that EBSCO or other vendors will say, this, these apps we will support, these configurations, these options um, we will support. Um, for the organizations that use Folio on their own, for the consortium, for the university libraries that deploy Folio on their own, they will have the ability to have ultimate flexibility, to develop their own apps and, and implement whatever apps that, from the community that they want to. Um, but when, when you have that support contract in place with EBSCO, we, we need to ensure that the certain apps that, we're, um, that, that we will support are, are defined. And so that the, a, a library knows exactly what they're going to get and have that, that security in place. Um, but we also don't want to stifle that innovation. We want to ensure that new apps are available. So um, we're looking at how can a library use supported apps and unsupported apps, and what does that mean? So those are some of the questions that we're looking to, looking to answer as a, as a support service. So um, as, as a part of this session, I just kind of wanted to uh, bring everybody up to speed on, on um, that aspect. Uh, I know there's been a lot of questions from libraries about um, these apps that, that are being developed both from within the core community but as well as, as other, um, other agencies or other third parties are, are developing apps. How, how does the support work for that? Um, do you have to email all of these different organizations or phone call all of these different organizations for help with these, with these services? And, and I wanted to let you know that there will be support services in place. Um, EBSCO has stepped up as well as other companies um, like uh, Circe Dynex, like Bywater Solutions, who have said, we will be providing um, these, these levels of services so that any library can be a part of this community. Um, so I uh, am going to end there. I, I want to also make sure that we have time for, for questions, and, and I know Peter had, had some updates as well, so I want to make sure that Peter has time. But um, I'm not sure if we can do question and answer because of the, the phones are muting, um, but I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that come in via chat. So we might want to take a few minutes, but um, maybe, Peter, it would be best for me to hand this off over to you, and, and then we can save some time for question and answer at the end. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, go ahead and uh, pass the ball over to me. Uh, and while he's doing that, I'll uh, echo Andrew's uh, comment to uh, put any questions or, an or questions that you might have into the uh, Q&A box, and uh, we will uh, answer those uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, I'm just going to share a web browser here. Uh, so my goal was uh, uh, if uh, Andrew's presentation was uh, about the Folio Innovation Challenge was getting you excited about uh, developing something uh, for Folio, uh, then uh, I wanted to talk 
just briefly about uh, the developer's curriculum. Um, Folio, uh, as you've probably heard, uh, is, a, is designed as a platform, uh, a platform on which uh, apps uh, run. Uh, so if you think of, of platforms that are out there, uh, you might think of uh, iOS and Android uh, in the mobile space. Uh, you might think of Alexa. Uh, from Amazon, uh, and what these platforms have in common is uh, a core set of, of technology that enables developers to uh, quickly build uh, uh, new apps uh, for things that weren't uh, envisioned uh, by the original uh, creators of, of the platform. Uh, and again, just think of the explosion of uh, mobile apps for iOS and Android and uh, the growing number of skills uh, in, uh, in Alexa uh, that, that Alexa can access. So this is a platform that is geared towards library services. It, it has built into it uh, notions that are, are very familiar to libraries, uh, patron records, uh, descriptive bibliographic records, holdings records, uh, that kind of, of functionality, or circulation uh, kinds of functionality. Uh, and so what we did is we developed this curriculum uh, that step-by-step step builds up the knowledge about uh, the platform and the ways that the components interact. Uh, there are two uh, main parts to Folio. Uh, one is a, uh, a gateway uh, proxy service called a copy. Uh, that uh, accepts uh, RESTful HTTP requests and uh, shuttles them out to uh, various modules to uh, handle the, the business logic and the storage. The second component is a web toolkit uh, that we call Stripes. Uh, and again, it is sending uh, RESTful HTTP requests uh, to the uh, Okapi gateway server. Um, and so we developed this curriculum to, to introduce you to those two pieces, uh, to the Stripes development uh, UI server, uh, to the Okapi gateway, uh, showing how an Okapi module is uh, uh, defined and deployed and enabled on a tenant, uh, and then understand how the Okapi Gateway uh, routes requests to uh, modules, how it handles authentication and authorization, and uh, and and those pieces, those 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 core platform pieces that uh, enable you to to build. Uh, bigger and better things on top of them. Uh, this curriculum is online. It's on the dev.folio.org site. Uh, if you put in slash curriculum, you'll get there. Uh, it's also linked from uh, several places on the dev.folio.org site. Uh, and it is intended both as a self paced tutorial, so it's, it's something that you can run through yourself. Uh, it's also something that uh, can be run as part of an in-person workshop. Uh, if you've seen the, uh, the dive into Hydra work, uh, it, it's the same kind of tutorial that you can either do uh, in person or, or, or in a workshop format. Uh, we modeled what we're doing uh, on, based on that uh, dive into Hydra work. So a, a uh, kudos to that community 
uh, for uh, uh, showing the way to, to uh, create this kind of curriculum. Uh, this curriculum was first presented at Code for Lib in March. Uh, we are presenting it uh, in two weeks uh, at the ELAG conference in uh, Athens, Greece. Uh, and there is also in July, I think, uh, a, uh, a workshop that's going to be held in Australia that is uh, 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 using the same curriculum uh, in an in-person workshop. Uh, the first page of the curriculum here describes uh, some system requirements. Uh, there are two ways that you can use to run the curriculum. Uh, you can either do it uh, on your own uh, computer or you can uh, download a vagrant uh, 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 download virtual box and, and uh, have a, a vagrant uh, virtual machine uh, that has all of the, the prerequisites for you. Uh, the, the prerequisites are not terribly hard, uh, but uh, they can be problematic, uh, for instance, on Windows machines. Uh, so for Windows, uh, we do recommend using the virtual box method uh, for Linux or Mac OS. Uh, you can use either the on machine or the, uh, if you have the, the prerequisites already on your, your machine, uh, or the virtual box guest uh, if uh, you're, you don't want to gum up your machine with uh, extra things. Uh, there are a couple, and so in, in that light, probably uh, the the least uh, cumbersome method is to use the virtual box guest. Uh, there are a couple of things that make the virtual box guest experience a little unique. Uh, and so you'll find uh, scattered throughout the curriculum uh, these boxes that, that point out things that are uh, specific to, uh, to the uh, vagrant uh, environment. Um, so the goal of this curriculum, like I said, is to build up a running Okapi server, a running Folio server. Uh, so we start with Okapi, uh, building that gateway, uh, looking at what an Okapi module looks like, a kind of standalone. Um, the, the, thing about the Okapi gateway is that it receives RESTful requests from clients and it also makes RESTful requests of modules. And so that's why we call it a gateway or we uh, refer to it as a proxy. Uh, it's sitting in the middle between uh, the end user and the modules uh, that are performing the, the business logic and the storage, and it sits in the middle to perform uh, authentication, authorization steps, uh, to perform logging, to perform uh, uh, performance uh, metrics, uh, and also to provide uh, a point uh, for a high availability cluster uh, where the, the uh, modules themselves can be spread across uh, several servers uh, and that, that load can scale up and scale down uh, depending, uh, or the, the number of servers can scale up and scale down depending on load. So we're first going to uh, build that Okapi server. Uh, we're going to initialize the Okapi gateway uh, using curl. Uh, it, the, the, the gateway itself is defined with uh, RESTful uh, requests, and so we use curl with some JSON documents to configure uh, the gateway. Uh, we then take a look at, uh, a brief look at authentication, uh, uh, how you uh, say who you are to the Okapi platform. Uh, that's lesson three. 
in lesson four, we set a copy aside and we look at the front end toolkit, uh, the, the Stripes UI toolkit. Uh, it's envisioned that uh, library staff for day-to-day -day use of Folio uh, will be using a web browser, will be using Stripes uh, to, to do their uh, their their day-to-day -day work, their their interaction with the Folio uh, system, uh, and so we we build that Stripes uh, UI server uh, as a standalone component and and demonstrate some of the the capabilities of that uh, standalone server uh, before we connect it to. Uh, the, the Okapi gateway, and that's lesson four, uh, deploying a, 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 a trivial Stripes application uh, to see what that's all about. Uh, in lesson five, we put the two pieces together. Uh, we configure the Stripes server to talk to the Okapi server, and we set up uh, the users app uh, with uh, modules both in Stripes, for the front end pieces and modules in Okapi to handle the back end pieces. Uh, and that's the, 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 the first point at, at which you can get a glimpse of uh, the true platform nature of, of Folio when you have the user interface elements uh, communicating through the gateway uh, to the Okapi modules behind it. Uh, this curriculum is a work in progress. Uh, we're working on, um, there's a, a utility uh, that we're using for a copy called the RAML Module Builder. Uh, and the RAML Module Builder uh, takes a, 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 a RAML file. Uh, RAML is a, a language used to describe a RESTful uh, interface. Uh, so, uh, describing the, the verbs get, uh, put, uh, post, delete, and so forth, uh, describing what the paths are, uh, the, those interfaces uh, for that RESTful endpoint. Uh, and then RAML Module Builder takes that RAML file and creates skeleton code in Java uh, that uh, you can then start to layer your business logic into. Um, that said, uh, of course, being RESTful, there is nothing uh, special about Java uh, with, uh, with Okapi and with Folio. You can create those Okapi modules in any programming language you want. Uh, the RAML module builder just provides some of the skeletal infrastructure uh, in Java uh, that you'll need to uh, create uh, create the um, uh, backend modules. Uh, there is talk uh, of uh, of outputting other skeletal uh, elements in other programming languages other than Java. Uh, that isn't on our roadmap right now with the RAML module builder. Uh, we're heads down uh, uh, building modules now. But as you think about uh, the development aspects of this, uh, if Java isn't your, uh, your preferred programming language, uh, there's nothing in, the, uh, in, this, in Folio itself that says that you have to use Java. Uh, you can use any uh, programming language that uh, deals with uh, RESTful, uh, RESTful interfaces. Uh, so we're developing that as a new lesson. Um, and in mentioning that this is a work in progress, uh, this is um, uh, uh, the curriculum itself is on GitHub. Uh, in the Folio project uh, organization. Uh, if there are changes uh, that you would like to make uh, that uh, fix errors or clarify instructions, uh, feel free to make pull requests. Uh, if you do notice issues but you don't have time to fix them, uh, please log them in the uh, Folio issue tracker, uh, issues.folio.org, and uh, one of us will pick it up and address it. 
so again, this is, is the folio curriculum intended to, to take you piece by piece, building up your understanding of the, the pieces, the, the uh, okapi and stripes that make up folio. Uh, if you're interested in just running what folio looks like now, um, or if you're a front-end developer, uh, our front-end developers tend to use, uh, tend to treat Okapi as a black box. Uh, they just want some virtual machine that's going to do all of the Okapi stuff so they don't have to worry about it. Uh, you probably want to look at the uh, Folio Ansible uh, uh, virtual boxes. Uh, so I'm coming here to dev.folio.org. Uh, and in the documentation section, uh, there is a link to the Folio Ansible project. Uh, and this has instructions for uh, uh, downloading uh, and uh, starting uh, the various types of, uh, of uh, vagrant uh, boxes that we have, uh, depending if you want the full-blown demo or if you're just looking for uh, Okapi is a black box. Uh, you can look at these instructions and uh, uh, download just the, uh, the piece that uh, you need. Uh, I think that will do it for the uh, demonstration purposes. I'm going to uh, stop sharing and see if uh, we have any questions. Um, Mark, you want to uh, take us through the questions? I'll pass the ball back to you. Sure, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew and Peter. We do have a couple of questions. And for those of you who are attending, please feel free to add more questions to the Q&A panel in WebEx. Um, the first question is for Peter. Uh, are there any plans for an in-person tutorial like was done at Code for Lib earlier this year? Uh, yes, we're uh, doing the, uh, the, tutor the, the workshop uh, tutorial uh, at ELAG in Athens, Greece in a couple weeks. Uh, Australia is having uh, uh, their own. Uh, I am putting in a proposal to uh, the LIDA National Forum I, I think that's in November. Um, have uh, also put in a um, a uh, workshop to um, I think I did this to Access in Canada, um, uh, presenting uh, this in a in a in person uh, environment. Um, if this uh, if none of those kind of cover your your geographic area or your timeline. Uh, then, you know, if, the, if there's another gathering where people are already coming um, or some other way that uh, uh, we can uh, get some uh, knowledgeable people uh, to present uh, a workshop, uh, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, uh, get in contact with me uh, and we'll see if we can work out the details. Very good. Uh, the next question is for Andrew. Andrew, I'm going to unmute you. Thank you. Uh, it regards resource sharing. Resource sharing was listed as a core application. Are there plans to have index data develop that? Or is that something the innovation challenge might cover? Um, I'm not aware of any active development projects on, on resource sharing, um, but we do recognize that that is something that needs to be uh, core to what, what Folio is all about. And I think the community has sees that as kind of a, a core app. Um, I, I don't see the community actively involved in, in developing that right now, nor index data. Uh, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think that would be a, a great uh, proposal for the innovation challenge um, as, a, as a potential opportunity. Right. There, there, it, is, it is identified as uh, something that's needed. Um, there, it, it is not, in, at this 
it's not uh, part of release one uh, next year as as we're building towards. Uh, there is a special interest group, uh, the uh, the consortia special interest group, that has uh, started talking about the requirements or or really what resource sharing might look like uh, in in a folio platform environment, uh, and there have been some ideas there. Uh, but I agree with Andrew that uh, uh, this uh, would make a a great uh, idea for um, uh, a, an innovation uh, challenge grant, uh, even to uh, uh, explore uh, what resource sharing uh, might look like. Very good. Thanks again, Andrew and Peter. Um, there's no further questions, um, so I'll just mention um, our, our next forum, I can just pull up the slide. This concludes today's Folio Forum on Folio Innovation Challenge and Folio Services from EBSCO. You can continue the conversation at Folio Discussion website, discuss.folio-org, and on Twitter using the hashtag Folio Forum. The recording of today's forum will be posted soon to the openlibraryenvironment.org website. If you have feedback on this forum or an idea for a future forum, please contact forum facilitators at facilitators at olay-lis.openlibraryfoundation.org. Our next folio forum will be on June 14th with the topic Folio Quarterly Roadmap Update and Demo by Harry Kaplanian and Kurt Nordstrom. And you can go to that same website for more details and the link to register. Thank you to our speakers, Andrew Nagy and Peter Murray, and to everyone who asked questions and added comments. Good day to everyone. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Yeah, thank you all. Take care.